In 2021, 60% of healthcare payments were tied to value and quality-based care, while 40% were from fee-for-service models. Fee-for-service and value-based care are seen as polar opposite systems in the healthcare industry. While we are seeing an increase of usage in the value-based care system, fee-for-service follows not too far behind. It's important to address both, they are widely used and utilized for different purposes. So let's take a look at what they are and how they differ. In regard to a fee-for-service practice, think quantity over quality. A practice that uses a fee-for-service model charges clients separately for each service that they receive. This includes office visits and any kind of testing. An incentive for practices that use this method is to provide more services in order to receive more revenue. Say you are a dental practice that offers a variety of services, such as teeth cleaning, teeth whitening, x-rays, and so on. All of the services would be billed separately or viewed individually on the patient's bill that receives these things. Those services can rack up, so why choose it? Some benefits include higher revenue, more management behind pricing, and building strong relationships with clientele. Fee-for-service has been around for quite some time, dating back to the 1930s. Value-based care, introduced in the late 60s, was created as a solution to rising healthcare costs and reduced quality of care. When unnecessary services exist and the quality of them isn't sufficient, less business may be the result. Let's move on to the value-based care system. There is a focus on the patient experience. Patients are seen at the center here. Healthcare providers are held more accountable for patient outcomes. For value-based care, think the opposite of fee-for-service, quality over quantity. Quality of care as well as provider performance are significant factors taken into consideration. The amount of money that providers receive depends on these factors. Since 2021, this is a model we've seen more and more practices begin to follow. The goal is to achieve better care for individuals, better health for populations, and all at a lower cost. In order to achieve a value-based care system, a few things need to take place. A lot of analysis and understanding comes with putting this model into application. You have to understand your client's needs in order to be able to treat them better or make things more convenient. Data managing skills are very important. A strong IT infrastructure is needed in order to identify those areas where you are lacking, figure out how you are going to improve, and then measure improvements and evaluate. You can't just hit the ground running. You also need to have access to patient history and information in order to promote better care coordination or reduce medical errors. It takes a team effort to make the benefits of value-based care come to fruition. But as they do, the payoff can be seen from a mile away. According to Humana, 2022 showed a record 70% of individual Medicare Advantage patients aligned with value-based providers. If you'd like to learn more about fee-for-service versus value-based care, reach out to eTactics. And you already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below.